Also, I think they can hear me in during the screen, which is okay. No, no, that's fine. Yeah, l less sultry today, but yeah. Uh, more of a, you know, a, a distressed. Oh, no, that's, you're okay. You can do what you need to. Ah, uh, there we go. We got our first person. Fire when you're ready. Hey, everybody. Reaper fans, Reaper peeps, Reaper awesomes. Yeah, I was base coding. I was base coding fail. <laughs> because apparently, although I watched my ogre ages ago, he probably had like finger oils and stuff uh, build up on him. So he was not taking his base coat like a man or like an undead ogre thing, whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, I got back from Santa Fe last night and uh, decided I would drag my butt out of bed and actually do a stream today. Um, you will not uh, see a, uh, yeah, happy time zone. Um, but uh, you will not see a real interruption in my streaming until I get closer to moving, which will be uh, like around April 1st, I think, because the movers pick up my stuff on the 3rd. So I have to have everything packed up uh, right around the 1st. So. That is about, on my, on my one year Reaper anniversary, 17 years, one year anniversary, um, or 17 years anniversary, uh, I, we will probably have an interruption in service for about a week and a half. Um, and that would be Wednesday, I think. We'll, we'll see. We'll see when we get closer, but I probably will have to have the, the desk packed up um, in advance. So, so yeah, so then you'll probably not see me for about a week and a half, because uh, that's how long it'll take to move to California. Um, and then uh, we will resume as soon as I possibly can. And there's kind of a question mark for anybody who's ever moved across country and employed professional movers to do it. You know, there's kind of a question mark on exactly when they deliver your stuff. So I know the earliest day they can deliver and I know the latest day they can deliver and I'm hoping they deliver on the earliest day um, because I won't have my stuff otherwise. Uh, I might bring the webcam just in case uh, and maybe the computer, maybe I'll pack that in the car, but I won't have a real good setup. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. Yes, hello everybody. Hello, 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 hello. Yes. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that, Taz Lynch. I don't have a lot of fragile stuff, and most of the fragile stuff that I have is going with me. You know, most of my fragile, valuable stuff is, is smaller. I'm going to bring my laptops with me. You know, I'll bring a camera with me. Um, my big lights aren't terribly fragile, so actually they should pack up pretty well. Um, and then, yeah, it's just... Just that stuff. And then my dog. My dog is fragile. So so we're driving Kiri to California. Um, right here. Yeah, long road trip for old dog. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I mean, otherwise my stuff is, you know, either not that expensive, you know, Ikea. So if it breaks, it breaks. 
Um, but otherwise, uh, I'm hoping most of it manages to make it intact. So let's make sure I'm talking, saying hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Yeah, I mean, I, I hired an expensive and very, very uh, reputable mover to Avalanche, very, very, very highly rated. Um, and they insure your stuff um, against any damage and stuff, uh, every, everything you've got. So I'm paying for it, but for me, it's worth it. We'll see. I've never done it before. I always moved myself, but my back is just too bad now. There's no way I could do it without hurting myself, so... But yeah, good morning. <laughs> Kiri wrapped in bubble wrap. She would not like that. She would wiggle a lot, probably. Um, oh yeah, well, no, I mean, Bexa, I'm gonna have to do it anyway. It's a four day road trip, right? So I'm packing a week, at least a week's worth of clothes and then I can do laundry at David's. So it's not a big deal. But yeah, it does, 3D, 3D and D. I think it does. Um, yeah, yeah, I remember having to load all, I moved cross country before and just done it myself. It was such a pain, oh my God. And that was actually when I put my back out was the first cross country move to the East Coast. So, so yeah. Uh, starts at 1 p.m. Kaz, not sure. Um, but yeah, uh, 11 takes this time. I guess there's some time zone like uh, confusion here, but I'm not sure what. Hi, Planer. Um, so yeah, anyway, today I thought I would do something kind of fun. Um, I've got Mr. Mega Crown Ogre, as you all saw me base coating. Uh, I thought I would do actually some red NMM. I would do some colored NMM today. Uh, it's the same kind of principles that you're using for any other kind of NMM, but a lot of people somehow are always asking, how is it different? So really the only difference is in the colors, but I thought I would demo it for you today. And we'll also use white to highlight our red without it going pink. Um, so that's something I haven't covered before with red. Uh, so we're going to do that, and I'm actually going to use some Pathfinder colors today. So that will be awesome, too. Hi, Koobs. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that. Uh, I like doing red NMM on armor because I used to paint a lot of vampires. Uh, and when you've got that armored vampire and you're using, like, black cloth and you want to do something different for the armor uh, and you don't just want to do silver and you want them to look more menacing, uh, it's using, like, an enameled red works. This also works really well for science fiction stuff where you're dealing with maybe a ceramic alloy armor where maybe it's colored. Uh, so if you want to do like Infinity Guys or you're just doing a science fiction bust and you want to do a, a slightly different color of armor than normal, um, this works. Because uh, if it's shiny, it's going to act like NMM. Uh, oh, we're talking about time zones again. Yeah, Pathfinder colors. Yeah, I'm using my favorite reds from Pathfinder, which everybody should go out and buy because they're awesome. But okay, let us go. Let us actually let me uh, make sure I don't do a Justin and I will disable my pro tips intro. There we go. So it will not replay, or Collins. Collins uh, uh, made the, the blooper the other day. So there we go, and we will go to minicam. Boing. Minicam. Col Collins is nothing but bloopers, so it's okay. <laughs> I think that's why people tune in. So, yes, as you can see, it's a very gray, dreary day outside here in uh, Denton, and we are, of course, in my home studio, so welcome home. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So I'm using for my base code here uh, Ergothoa Red, which is 89508. And I really like this. It's a warm, dark red. It's got a bit of purpley to it as well. Uh, so I really just like the color. It's up here, it's this dark crimson color. And then for our first highlight, we're actually gonna be using Asmodeus Red, which some of you know is my favorite Pathfinder Red, which is a nice warm brick color, which is right there. Uh, then we've got Clear Red, just because I wanted a, a good, solid, actual bright red to take up everything with. And I know that this won't interact badly with anything because it's just red pigment. And then we've got our, our pure white. And down at our darkest shadow down here in the corner is going to be walnut. So 9136. So let me line all those up for you guys. Boop. And remember, you've got to have a nice dark shadow and you've got to have pure white in order for it to look reflective and shiny. So that is why we are using a, a almost black to pure white lineup. Um, and then the body of the MM, the majority of the MM is going to be in here. So we will, we will do that. And we'll probably do a bit of a mix um, between the red and the white for our second to last highlight. But we will get these out of the way because I don't want the camera to focus on them. But if you need me to repeat anything, just let me know as usual. Hello, hey, Gritty Table. Uh... Ah. All right, so I'm gonna continue. Let me get my, oh no, where did I put my glasses? Hmm, this is the question. Need granny glasses. Well, I've got backup granny glasses, so we're good. And they're purple. Well, hmm? Also, to shine some light on the, uh, the the time of the show changes, 
Um, there are definitely places in the U.S. that don't observe the daylight savings. Yeah, right? Arizona so doesn't. So it could, right? So it, it could mess up when you're seeing the show. To you, it could look like it's noon right now, um, possibly. But uh, the clock below stream chat is is accurate as of right now. I, I refreshed it a few minutes ago, and it seemed to be working. So obviously, there's there's something going on somewhere, but it could just be daylight savings time ultimately. That is likely. I know I was messed up this morning because daylight savings. Because not only daylight savings time, but it also was like a, a time zone change. And uh, although they should have canceled each other out, I still felt pretty discombobulated this morning. One of my favorite words, discombobulation. Which is totally Wisconsin, apparently, um, or Midwestern tone uh, term. Because in the Milwaukee airport, which is the airport I fly into when I go home to visit my family, they actually, after you go through security, they have a big sign that says recombobulation zone, which is awesome. Milwaukee's a nice small airport, and they have a sense of humor. All right. Hey, Planner, how you doing? Hello, everybody. Oh, hi, Reaper John. Uh... Yeah, yeah, daily saves time plus full moon. Mental calendar completely screwed. Yeah, 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 I'm there. So I had a good time looking at, uh, David and I really like to look at, at art. So when we went to Santa Fe this weekend, uh, we went to a lot of art galleries. And I mean a lot. I mean probably over 30. <laughs> More art galleries than any other normal human being would go to see. But I got a lot of um, pictures of some really nice artwork. And uh, a lot of color schemes, actually. So uh, that's kind of what we do is we go and we look, uh, we look, we like to look at art, but we also, if we see one that's uh, got really cool textures or really cool color combos, we'll take pictures of them and then use them on models. So I have some ideas. Um, I took one uh, that's really, really neat of a redhead, and I really liked the colors they did on her hair because it's really dark auburn, but it's still, still a redhead. So I'm going to try to duplicate that on a figure coming up. Maybe I'll do it for the stream just for fun once I have it figured out but that's actually a great idea if you're in somewhere um, that has art, art museums and art galleries are a great place to go and kind of get ideas for unusual color schemes and it doesn't matter what kind of painting you're looking at it can be anything from a landscape to a still life I took some pictures of uh, some awesome still lifes with almost photorealism um, in the textures which I probably will use one of those as an example for uh, one, an upcoming pdf on my patreon which I'll hereby plug um, patreon.com slash painting big is my patreon and uh i think it's exclamation point ends patreon on the uh stream here there we go that looks pretty solid we'll let that dry okay um but yeah um, my patreon i do a lot of pdfs and uh, videos with accompanying pdfs and uh i go i'm able to be more uh directed instead of getting distracted by questions so that's nice um so it's a little different of a thing than what we do here all right. Oh, Friday the 13th this week. It is just that kind of week, isn't it? Yeah. That's funny. Plus, I went off diet in uh, Santa Fe because we went to many tasty restaurants where I could not eat strictly on my new diet. So feeling a little muzzy because of that, too. All right. So let's block in our shadows. Let's put up some walnut. And I know some of this is still wet, but it's fine. I can still block in a shadow. I think so, that was my favorite thing about Santa Fe, actually, was all the tasty food. Oh, yeah. The food is amazing. If you are an eater, if you like spicy food and you just generally like amazing food. We actually went to a French place that was amazing in Santa Fe um, that I had not gone to before. And then we, of course, went went to Santa Fe Mexican a lot. And we found a local diner for breakfast that was really awesome. Um, and, uh, yeah, generally... Went to it. They actually, if you can believe it, my favorite restaurant there actually isn't Santa Fe Mexican. It's uh, African, African Caribbean Fusion, which is where the, the chef is from the Caribbean, I believe, and his, has his roots in West Africa and does some just some amazing stuff. Oh, my gosh. It's called Jambo's Cafe, Jambo Cafe. And it's a local, like the locals all know about it. You can still find it on things like TripAdvisor and Yelp because it's really good. But uh, it's out of ways. I kind of like it when I'm not staying downtown because I don't have to hunt for parking. But it's, uh, it's got some amazing stuff on that menu. Let's see here. Okay, I need to get a ticker tape with my Patreon link. 
I mean, that's the first rule of having a Patreon, though, is that you've got to promote it or nobody knows about it. Nobody hears about it. Nobody joins it. And then you don't really have a Patreon. So, and now, uh, in case some of you didn't hear, I am going to be um, relocating and uh, no longer working directly on site for Reaper um, as of around April 1st. And uh, moving to California to be with my guy. But I will still be streaming in the morning for Reaper. So I'm still affiliated with Reaper, still working for Reaper on in a distant location. Ed wanted to call it just a relocation. I'm just lining around my plates here with some walnut. Yeah, yeah. There are some Caribbean and West African food can be just amazing stuff. Um, you from the African, you you still get like curries and things, but it's with a different take on it in the Caribbean because of course they use like um, different a different mix in their curry, so it's more allspice. It has a bit of clove in it too. It's really really tasty. I actually like it better than uh, traditional Indian curry. I do like Thai curry, but I've been cutting back on my curries. All right, so it's just shading under the various plates to get a nice dark shadow. And then I'm going to kind of extend that down. It is moist here today, so my paint is apparently going to take its sweet time drying. Hello, 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 David Weir. Hi, Robin. So yeah, lots of good food. I ate too much good food. I actually, <laughs> I gained a couple. I had lost three pounds before I went on my new diet, and then I gained two back, um, sadly. But, oh, thank um, you for the raid, Dragonheart. Oh, yay, Dragonheart. Thank you for raiding us. Ooh, 24 people. Hi, 24 people. I am Anne. I work for Reaper Miniatures, and I'm the person who created the Master Series paint line, and I also am a staff painter, and I am currently about to show people how to paint some red NMM. Non-metallic metal is what NMM stands for. So it's painting uh, an area like it is shiny and reflective without using metallic paints. And you would use it, um, it, it, de it generally is popular among painters because it photos better. So if they're doing stuff for eBay or doing stuff just the, where they're putting a gallery up online, um, it lets you control highlights and shading better. And it, the camera definitely likes it a little better. Um, and then if you are trying to really control like where the eye goes or where reflections are or where highlights are, then you can do that with NMM where you cannot do it with traditional metallics because traditional metallics are going to reflect the light as it is in the environment, and you really have no control over that. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see here. I think I'm going to do highlights down the middle because it's kind of, if I look at where my light is falling on it, see, it's kind of got a little rounded, rounded highlight coming over these plates. I'm probably going to block in a shadow then. And I'm just going to block in that shadow on either side of that area, just really lightweight with my, uh, and it's going to kind of go in a crescent and it's kind of going to go, it's going to go down here. I may or may not block it out down here. I may want more of an under reflection when I get to these. We shall see, but I'm doing it real rough. I don't care if it's, I'm not going to blend it in right away. I just kind of want to place it so I don't forget it. Might just make that a deep shadow instead down here. And uh, it doesn't matter if it's not blended in. I can just grab a little bit of my Ergothoa and work with that in a little bit to kind of blend it in. But mostly right now, I just want you want your highlights and shadows to look right, so block them in so you can actually assess that and remember where they are. And worry about blending later. So we got kind of a deep shadow there. Just throwing this off because it's also reflecting right now since it's wet. So let's take our Amadeus. We know we're going to have kind of a scallop of light down here and the brightest point is going to be at the edges of these plates in the center because if light is shining down from on top it's going to hit this plate and make a highlight, but then where it falls off of the plate is actually where it's reflecting directly at your eyes. So the edge of each of these plates is where the brightest highlight's going to be. I'll probably do a secondary highlight around kind of in a, in a again, in a scallop kind of shape. We'll start with our Amadeus though. 
I might need to make this a little thicker because I thinned it quite a bit. Yep, yep. I'm oh, sorry. I mix. I mi I missed that. E I -X -A -X? Have you put any primer down? No, nope. no. I wash them with dish soap and water. I just throw them in a plastic mixing bowl with um really hot water and a bit of dish soap. Swoosh them around, rinse them off, and let them dry overnight. I find that that is usually good enough to take off any mold release agents. Um, this one gave me a little trouble, but it's probably because I've been using him for a lot of different demos so far. Um, there's his metallics on his front. You can see I did a the breastplate. Um, so probably me just me touching him has put extra finger oils on him uh, over the course of the many tutorials that I've used him for. But no, I generally do not believe in priming bones. I don't want to take the chance because uh, too many too many spray primers react with bones. I don't have an airbrush set up yet. Um, once I have an airbrush set up, I may use that to prime bones because um, that way you can control what the chemistry of the primer you're using so you can choose something that you know doesn't react with the PVC. But otherwise, all the my stuff, all this stuff is just, I basically go with paint. I do not bother with primer. And if you wash them first, it works perfectly well. And in most cases, not so much with this guy, because again, I think my handling it just um, laid down a lot of oils. But uh, most of the time, I have no problem even using a thinner base coat on it after I wash it, which is uh, usually with bones, if you're just doing them out of the package, you have to use your paint full strength to get it to stick because you've still got the mold release. But if you wash them, you can use a thinner base coat if you're like me and you like thinner base coats. So what I'm doing here is I'm hitting an outer reflection because we're going to have light reflecting up from the side. And then I'm starting to bring up my middle reflection here. And you can see the shadow coming in from both sides. I may need to round my shadow a little bit earlier than I did, but we'll see. We'll see. Let's see here. Hey, no problem. And sorry, I'm sniffly. I was like, Santa Fe is so dry because it's high desert in the winter. And then I came back here to this weather and I'm just like, oh my God, my sinuses are just dying. Let's see here. Do I want to try putting some clear red in? Yeah, that's still drying in the middle, but I'll start hitting a little bit over here with clear red. So clear red is only red pigment in a clear base. So it is your brightest, brightest red. It is the brightest red you can get. And if I really wanted it bright, I would underpaint with white. Hey, Achilles Blade, thanks. Yeah, simple green. I mean, you could use that also. Dish soap for me is just easier. I'm going to hit the bottom of these plates. I'm actually going to stop and blow my nose because I'm definitely getting sniffly. Thank you, Texas weather, for being so humid after so much dryness. My sinuses are just dumping. They're just like, we're in the wet again. Yay. There we go. Hopefully that will keep me from being quite so sniffly for you. All right, so now I'm just kind of blocking in some a little highlights with the clear red. And obviously it's not very bright yet. I'm not building it up yet. I'm more just kind of testing to see how this looks. Because um, again, I want my highlights and shadows to look right. So I am just kind of hitting in little areas where I know there's gonna be a highlight. And the edge of these plates down here is definitely a place where we're gonna have highlights because of the light bouncing up from underneath. And I'm oh, Amazon. thank you, Malin. How do we get a... Gifted sub. Oh, yay. Oh, yeah, we, we need that. Where are we? Are we on... Uh, we only needed like 11 more, didn't we? Or was that before last time? No, uh, we needed 11 more, correct. So yes. we're now, now we need 10 more. 10 more. 10 more before I do an AMA of questions that you guys left on the Reaper Discord in Questionable Anne. I believe there are quite a few of them. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to kind of use a sideways brush stroke to kind of suggest light coming down the middle. And it won't really start to look that way until I bring more um, more white into it. We're going to start yeah. with this. Huh? They said uh, people are reporting that I'm a little loud on there. You're loud? So should we should take you no. down in the tray or should we take you down in the mixer? Uh, take me down in the mixer. All right. Justin is loud. Like, OMG, 
And we'll take you down to like 70 ish. Testing. How does Justin sound now? How about now, guys? Ha, <laughs> Kariniko, you are so right. It's not an ant tutorial if there isn't at least one clear color. But with red, I really think clear red is the is the red to go up to. Back to sultry. Thank you, Numbat. What was that? Back to good? Oh, back to sultry. Ha ha ha. Well, now we know. Yeah, you, you guys are allowed to tell us when stuff is too loud. Please yeah, definitely. Do. Yeah, because we're always trying to tune in. And, of course, since I'm in my home studio, it is going to be a little different than the Reaper studio. Justin can't really do a lot with the soundboard here. So. Yeah, I'm not getting a direct source that I can adjust on the fly, unfortunately. Right. I'm going to try to do some ink. And I'm going to just kind of map it in. So let's see. So you want to kind of... And this is, a, this is a weird example, um, actually. Hold on. Actually, I think that's, that's okay. I don't want to lose. I'm probably going to glaze with regu regular red over this. Now, this, of course, is a mixture of pure white and clear red. And what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to block in the highlights and see how it goes. And I'm going to do a little bit on the side, too. And this is not clear red, not pure white, of course, so... Let me see if I can get it to kind of make this sideways uh, highlight come up. Picking up a little bit more red here. That's starting to, I feel like though that I missed, I really need to bring it in. It needs to be more of a, more of an um, ellipse, I think. One second. Sorry for the sniffles. Ah, all right. Yeah, I think I want it to be more of a kind of a because this is rounded, so I would I wouldn't go all the way down. So let's actually grab some Ergothoa red, which we're working with Pathfinder reds today. So we're working with that, and we're working with this. And Ergothoa was our base coat, and uh, uh, Masmodius was our first highlight. So I'm gonna actually make this more rounded. Um, and kind of cut it off, make it real narrow down here, and then cut it off entirely on those two. Because it's probably how the light would shine. So I'm going to block this out. And I do this kind of adjustment all the time. A lot of times it, you don't get your colors exactly right. Yeah, that already looks better. Um, hold on, where is it? Uh, Bill Robertson, where is your question? Uh... What was your question there, Bill? I'm sorry, I missed it. Uh, Justin, let's see, can I scroll? Can I scroll up? Chat, I don't know if chat, I can get... Uh, that should be for all shows, Guillotine. Um, although, Reaper Live at Reaper Mini also works, and it's it's really free, the one. We're, we're eventually going to completely transition to just giveaways. Um, I'm looking for your question, Painting Dog. Regular Bones, you have a hard time getting a smooth finish. Interesting. And it gets bumpy and grainy. Are you using our paint, Bill? Yes, my next question is, what paint are you using? Because I get, uh, this is straight, um, I mean, I guess I could grab a regular Bones model, but I haven't had any problems with uh, getting a different finish. Like, like, uh, and you're using our paint? Yeah, like I usually put on one coat, let it completely dry, and then I go back in and do a touch up if I have to. That's true. If it's. Regular bones. Yeah. Yeah, if you tell us what paint you're using, that might be part of it, or it might be um, if you're continuing to paint while the first coat you put on is, dry, is still drying, you can get um, globs. But it seems odd that it would do that on regular bones, unless it's beating up somehow. I do. Um, I paint for this uh, stu for this stream. I paint with regular bones and with bones black, and I I have no problem with base coats. 
Okay, so I don't know the monument paint line at all, so I'm not sure. They could have a different sort of resin in their paint um, that is causing a bit more of an issue. Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with monument at all. I do know that Reaper pretty much says, as far as painting straight onto bones, um, that we only recommend it with Master Series. So you may just want to prime, Bill, if you're using a paint line different from Master Series. Because uh, pretty much we found in the, in the early days of Bones that Master Series was the only paint line that reliably adhered straight, you know, straight out of the packaging with Bones without a primer. Uh, so that could be part of it right there. Let's see here. I'm trying to, yeah, that looks a lot better. All right, I do need a little bit right down here though. But yeah, different paint lines use different resins, and different resins are going to adhere to a surface in different ways. So. You can definitely get a variance as far as how they go over bones, as far as playing right over the plastic. Um, I'm not sure if you're not priming the bones, then I definitely would. And uh, I would definitely, oh, hello, Balrog. Um, if you are priming, I would maybe re-examine your choice of primer. Also, uh, real quick, too, for the people talking about the autoresponder for, I think, last week, as it turns out, uh, Courtney is not doing autoresponders. He is uh, he is manually sending those replies. So if they don't come immediately, that's that's probably why he uh, I told him that it would become cumbersome after a while and and that he should probably set something up. So if you guys didn't get an autoresponder, that is why oh, he's trying to be like personal and stuff. Personal attention, but it does take time. It's always the downside, right? You know, we all like more personal attention and actually interacting with a real person, but then we have to remember that real people have schedules. So one thing I do want to point out is that I'm doing, you'll notice I'm using a side, sideways stroke on these. And usually I do not recommend, usually with a long, narrow surface, I will use a perpendicular stroke uh, instead of a stroke that is the same direction as the long surface. The reason I'm doing it this way is that this is the way you're looking at it. So I feel like essentially this way is the way the light is going to scatter across the surface. This way is the way that the light is going to uh, reflect. So if I tried it up and down, it wouldn't necessarily look uh, correct. So part of it is not just the, the uh, shape of the surface as far as my brush, brush stroke, but also the orientation of the light. Um, so it's a little, it's, if some of you are noticing that it's different from some of the other ways I've done it in the past. Uh, you, ply, you prime with Steinal Res. See, and you should be fine with Steinal Res, I think. I know that Katie has primed bones with Steinal Res. That's why she did her the big dragon. So that's really weird. Huh. I'm trying to think of what else could cause that. But you've stumped me, Bill. It would probably help if I was familiar with that paint line. I just am not. All right, let's see here. Let's try to make this come in a little bit. Maybe I need to use more of this. So as you can see, this is, well, just like with regular NMM, and since this is a curved surface and it's a, uh, it's a big surface, and I don't know how thick I want my shadows to be, but I don't want to lose a lot of red either. This is starting to look good, though. <laughs> I don't know if it's a user error, Bill. Sorry. I wish I hate to imply that because there are a lot of weird. There's a lot of weird paint chemistry out there. Um, grainy and uh, just don't clumpy and grainy sounds weird to me. It sounds weird that something would do that over Steinal Res, which is so very. I mean, that, of all of the airbrush primers, Steinal Res is like the god. Like, nobody has problems with that primer that I've heard. Everybody loves it, so it seems weird. It seems more likely that it's the paint brand, but... I don't know. Sorry I couldn't be more helpful. Let's see here. I'm going to get a bit more of the highlight coming in. I want to kind of bring that secondary highlight up now and I want to have it actually shrink toward this dark part and show that it is converging 
that's starting to look more realistic. All right. So when you're working on a rounded surface, you usually have your main highlight and then you've got a secondary highlight on the side here. It makes it look a lot more realistic if you work with that secondary highlight. You won't bring it up to pure white. But I'm using these to shape this shadow area to make it look more realistic uh, and in line with the shape, the curved shape of these plates. All right. Just kind of connect those down there. I probably want a little bit more of Asmodeus red to make this, still want this to be red. If you go too pink, like I'm going very pink with this bottom plate, I'll just go back in with my clear red and kind of glaze over it uh, to bring up bring the red deeper. The key to highlighting red with white and having it not look pink is making sure that you have very little area that is pink. Like even if you're even if you do like what I just did and mapped this in very pink, then you want to go back in with your dark reds and make sure that you punch some of your shadows. Um, and uh, that you minimize the amount of actual pink, then you can actually paint red, highlight it with white without looking pink. But it's all, it's all surface control. It's all the amount of area that you leave pink as opposed to a different color. Let's see here. That upper area is looking nice, but I've lost a lot of my red, so I'm gonna get my clear red in. It's still obviously red, but it could be it could be a bloodier red. Let's do a glaze. Let's get some clear red over here. Throw some water into it. Current Echo wanted to know if you're using the one to one red to white there. Because uh, they can't see the uh, more mix. more or less. I mean, obviously, I'm doing a spot. I'm doing a spot mix, so it's going to be really really um, variable. And it really doesn't matter since I know I'm going to glaze over it. You can see the pink up here. It's a bit lighter. Um, it's probably, it's actually a little bit more white, I think, than a red because it's not a cherry pink. And the red is really strong. So it might even be a three to one. I just need it light enough to for it to show up as a highlight. I still haven't gone up to pure white on this. So I need it to work that way. Um, Let's see here. I'm gonna glaze over this now that I think it's dry. So a lot of red, put it over the whole thing. Just brush it right all over. And it will right away take out some of your pink problem. And we'll still see our highlights and shadows through it, but it'll take them uh, and blend them in a little bit more. Pretty effortlessly. If you see any of it pooling, use your brush and wick it off while it's still wet. Once it's started to dry, you're out of luck. So what you see, when you see the surface start to dull and not be shiny is when you stop slurping off excess paint. Then you have to just wait and pray. Um, I am using my usual one this time, actually, which is the Da Vinci Maestro Series 10 Size 1. Um, there we go, Da Vinci Maestro Series 10 Size 1. Um, yeah. My palette is there and my brush is there. Um, it is a very long, thin brush, which is why I like it. My porcelain palette does not have a lid, Pendrake. I actually just put uh, I put cling wrap, over, cling wrap over the top. Works great. Keeps it uh, wet for uh, a couple days. I actually had it. I went away, went away for a long weekend once, and it came back, and it was good. So it depends on the temperature in the house and the dryness and humidity in your house. Um, but in general, I find that the, uh, the cling wrap works great on these. I'm seldom going to... Um, I'm seldom going to want the same colors for more than a couple days anyway. Um, and if I do go back to a piece, I'm more likely to, you know, want to mix up fresh colors. Um, so, but sometimes like when I'm working on a crazy NMM, like I am right now with my, one of my competition models, um, it's like a brass NMM. So I'm playing with it a lot and, uh, have some really wonky mixed colors with it. Um, then I will absolutely mix them. And then for the next few days, I'll just, you know, 
use the saran wrap. Um, the key to using the saran wrap with your porcelain palette is to actually put a bit of drops of water around the colors you're using. So I'm like usually working on a side. So I'll put drops of water up here and down there. If I was working this way, I put drops of water all in these. And that keeps more humidity under the cling wrap and it means your paint isn't gonna dry. So there you go. Let's, uh, let's see here. Looks like I got a little bit, see I got a little bit of ringing there. So now I can show you guys how to fix that. So I left a little bit too much of my glaze and it made a little ring, it made it, it left an artifact. And this is when you don't pull off all of the glaze, you've broken the paint, you've thinned it so much that it's not gonna hold together. So what I need to do then is I need to paint over that. And since it is a glaze, so it's very small, very thin, it should actually be pretty easy to disguise that. Gonna mix up, I should just mix up some pink, I guess. Yeah, I think it's about a three to one, maybe a little bit more. We'll use that, that looks good. Then we'll come back in with this pink. Oop. You can see how little paint, you see how little paint I'm getting on my brush. Like you can see, I only dip about a third of my brush into the paint, so. <laughs> no problem, Tiddly. I try to I try to give many, many useful tips. Um, but yeah, I really love my well palette. I'm not a wet palette fan, so for me, learning to work with the well palette, um, learning to, you know. The other tip for doing it is um, if you don't use a cling wrap, Rhonda, uh, who is bird with a brush on here, Rhonda Bender is a reaper painter, she will put a wet sponge. She'll just work with, you know, a few wells, and she'll just get a sponge wet, and obviously not dripping wet, but she'll put it over the top of the color she's working with, and she says it keeps it good for like a week. So as long as you take your sponge off, you know, when you're painting and put your sponge back, get it a little wetter um, when you are done painting. She says it works great. But yeah, I prefer the well palette just because it gives me a lot more control. Yeah, I'm like, you know, could do a little bit more over here. Just trying to mess with my NMM and capture the uh, shape of the uh, the armor better. I think I might grab a little shadow to kind of add under here. That's showing up a little bit better. I think I'm not scooping quite as much as I need to here. I need to make the top one broader, this one less. Um, honestly, Zeistus, uh, it's, it, only if you're using a porcelain, like only use a porcelain well palette because anything else you will not be able to remove the paint. Uh, and the more you scrub it, the more your next layer of paint will, will stick to it. So porcelain only, but these are so easy. You just put them in the sink with some hot water in them and then spray some 409 or Simple Green or whatever other normal kitchen cleanser you have on hand um, into them. Just let them sit in the hot water and cleanser for like 10 minutes and then you can use a green scrubby pad to take it right off easily. Very, very easy. That's part of why I love my porcelain palette is it, it cleans up to pristine. You know, I've been using this one for years and it's easy to get it super clean after every use. Though usually I'm good about rinsing it out right after I paint in it um, if I'm not trying to save the paint. So let's make a broader highlight up here. Nice broad highlight and then we're gonna shrink that one, I'm gonna shrink that one. That one's a little, that's a little bit better. Yeah, I like that better. So I'm using, I would be doing the same thing if I was using gold or silver, I would just be using different colors. It's getting there. It's quite reflective. Yeah, let's see. Ha ha, and the Meldrack, you're very, very silly with your PBS glue. Yeah, yeah, paper, the porcelain ones are so much worth it. I mean, yeah, you're gonna pay like eight bucks instead of a, a buck, but I mean, it cleans up great. And the, the link that had my link to my brushes also had a um, link to the palette that I'm using on Cheap Joe's Art Supply. I'm gonna try to red this out a little bit more. I want more red. Now it's time for more red. 
Hey, Jacob. Hello, Jacob's here. Yay. Sweet. I need to keep an eye on time. Oh, well, we're getting there. We're almost done. It is It is looking like metal. Now I'm just, like, messing with it. Like, I want more red in there. And I'm going to get some pure white. All right. So let's get some pure white and hit the bottom of each of these and also bring some pure white into this pink, which looks white, but it's not. Very little, and I'm thinning it, so we'll see. I don't, I don't want it to be too harsh. I do want it to be pretty solid along this bottom of this plate. Just pretty much a spot highlight to bring that out, and then I do want the center of this big pink splotch to be pure white. And I do want to shrink it as it goes down each plate to make it really bright. Really bright. All right, then we're going to probably get the bottom of this, bottom of that, bottom of that, hit these areas that would get, re get reflective light. You can hit these little dents and scratches that he's got in his armor with the white and suggest the light is catching them. All right, yeah, it's looking, it's looking fairly convincing. Good deal. I could glaze again if I wanted to. I'm gonna grab some pink here and actually do the bottom of this and then get some clear red to make it more red. And if you want it to be a brighter red, the key is to take your clear red and to paint it over almost any area that's not an absolute brightest highlight or darkest shadow. Um, It'll show some of the white through, like it kept the lighter highlight here. Um, and uh, it'll make everything look more red. I'm doing very shiny. I'm doing very shiny armor for the ogre today. But yeah, so that's kind of where we're going from. And if we were doing it up here, let me just say, if, if the light was coming from, looks like here the light is coming from this direction. And you do a bright highlight there. And you do a dark shadow next to it. Oh. Different different uh, shaped plates can be very hard to do in a mem on. Because really here you've got you've got kind of a bright highlight up here. So I put a shadow right under that so that I remembered it. But then you've also got a lesser highlight, like a, a directional highlight here. So this is kind of a fun one to show different um, how different highlights will hit. Different uh, shapes of plates. You always just have to think about how is the light falling. And the best way to do that is to just use your lamp. Use your overhead lamp and see where the light is coming from. And try to duplicate what you see. And if you do that, it's going to put you in a pretty good place. Let's see here. And if you want a sharp, shiny surface, you want to do what I'm doing and put the shadow very close to the highlight. If you want a more burnished surface, you would space those out and put a blend between them. Is uh, actually pin drake chainmail is the easiest thing to do as an MM because you're just painting it in mass. You're not trying to hit every link. Uh, it doesn't look right if you hit every link, so you just paint it as a a big mass of armor. Um, and it's actually it's usually so easy because you're just highlighting uh, the the big folds more than others. I think did I do a chainmail? I don't remember if I did a chainmail tutorial for you guys. Did I? If not, we can work on like an ogre or somebody else with some chainmail maybe this week. The chainmail on a mem is like ridiculously easy. Just kind of getting some lighter color here, working up from the bottom. Do another shadow, and then it's going to come up. 
And we're gonna have a little bit of light hitting the side of this crack. And we're gonna bring up the bottom part of this plate because it's gonna be reflecting light. And probably a little bit more than that, but I'm trying to wet blend at this point because I'm trying to block it in. That's gonna get a bit of a sharp edge. Nah, that's just blocking in where I would probably start with highlights and shadows. But on that, but down here is more developed, so you can see how the curved surface you wanna kind of scallop your your white should be very wide at the top plate and then shrink down as it goes down until it's just hitting the edges down here to make it look like metal, red metal. Yay, and actually I can highlight these a little bit more. Doo, doo, doo. Boom. Yeah, I'll try to find a good model with chainmail, but boy, chainmail and mem is so easy. It's like boring easy. I could do it in 15 minutes, boom. Also, uh, Tazalanch, at this point, it's it's uh, more of an art director type bottleneck. So Ron and I are working together to get the emotes kind of set because um, obviously we have multiple shows and he wants to be kind of a part of the process. Uh, so it's it's less about Twitch approval at this point and more about kind of what we want to do and what direction we're going. Pendrick, I don't think I would do purple or teal NMM at this point, although I do have some teal. See, it's got... Uh... The vertigree on the copper shoulder pad but uh i think i think really that either one would be a fashion mistake for this ogre because purple is right next to red on the color wheel and you don't want to use colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel um teal can work very well with red but i'd probably want to separate it out um with maybe some cop more copper stuff down here uh copper was taking a chance on this because actually it probably should be more like a blued steel or a, or a dirty steel like the front of his breastplate turned out um, because orange is also right next to red, so they don't go well together. So I'd, it's always think of that. You always want contrast, and contrast can be dark versus light. Contrast can be more opposite each other on the color wheel. Um, in general, on the color wheel, the closer colors are, the worse they are together. Um, they're too analogous. They do down here, but it's not. It's not. It doesn't really hang in folds. It just hangs down. So I mean, this would be even easier <laughs> to do Pendrake. Because it's so darn flat. I mean, I'd just have a shadow there. I'd probably have a little bit of a shadow there. I'd paint the rest of it. It's like side brushing. It's so easy. Um, but yeah, I mean, this chain mail is very flat. And it just has single... It's almost more scales, to be honest. It's more like like a, like a scale or a big ring mail than a chain mail. It's not as fine as some of the chain on some of our other models. Um, so it's just like columns of, of scales or rings. Um, but yeah, this, this big flat surface is, I mean, you just have to use your imagination at that point as to where you put your shadows. Usually it's easy because you shade where there are, uh, folds, but there's no folds in this chain mail, so I'd have to manufacture some. I could probably put them there where I put my, where I painted in the wash. But I'd start with just a steel or silver, um, um, like a gray base coat and use black for my shadows or gray liner, which I prefer to use because it's a little easier to blend in. Um, it does, Nomad Zeke, but contrast on a color theory level is about your base coat of colors, like your actual color composition. So contrast is like putting a light color next to a dark color. And I mean, contrast is also this, dark shadows, high highlights, right? But this only goes so far as to deal with this surface. So what do you do when you get to these surfaces? So if you want contrast over the whole model, you have to think about where you're putting your light and your dark colors, where you're putting your warm and your cool colors. Like you start with the color, I usually will start with the color that I most want on the model and then I'll work everything else from there. So if I start with red here, I'm gonna probably go blue or gold for the other ones because then you're dealing with the red, yellow, blue triad. If I was starting with this copper color and wanted it, I would have gone green, orange, purple maybe. And you could choose two of those too. You could, I could just have gone uh, green orange on this and done like copper with green vertigree armor um, and maybe done a little bit more green accents on things, you know, or with this, I could go red and gold, uh, just go red, yellow, forget the blue or suggest the blue by putting blue, blue shadows in the silver steel um, breastplate and metal. 
Uh, so you've got to think in both ways, right? You've got to think of contrast as far as which colors you're using, and you got to think of contrast as far as like lights and darks. Um, if you if you're going to use an analogous color scheme, like if I was going to do like orange, red, yellow, um, that would be difficult. But you could do it by making the red very dark, and the orange and yellow lighter, or maybe the orange is the metallic and yellow is a very pale highlight um, or accent somewhere. So you gotta, you know, think about all those things. Color theory is not just about the contrast on a, within a particular color, but the contrast across the model. So yeah, all right. Do, 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 do. I could do more on that in my Patreon, I suppose. Do more on contrast over the model. Color composition is more what, it's not really called contrast at that point as much as it's called color composition and it's about contrast and uh, warm and cool and all that stuff. But yeah, so there you go. So pretty much doing colored NMM is as easy as regular NMM. You're just using different, uh, different colors to do so. Um, I find that it works great with dark blues. It works great with red. If you're gonna go yellow or orange, it's obviously gonna look like copper or gold. So you can do purple. I've never tried to do purple really though. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I had to adjust it obviously. And this happens all the time. I mean, it's, I'm never I'm never perfect out of the gate with NMM, especially on unusual surfaces. I usually have to muck around with it, make it look right. There we go, that darker shadow's good. So, I mean, be, let that be a comfort to you if you feel like you don't have a handle on NMM. I don't either. I just jump in and then I adjust it until it looks right. And that's a great way to do it because for one thing, as you're adjusting it, you're going to learn why it works and why it doesn't work. Uh, especially if you try it and you think that it's failing, take it to somebody who, you know, um, somebody who actually knows how to do NMM and they'll probably be able to correct you very slightly and that'll be a good educational um, option as well. But yes. All right. I think I'm about right, uh, about ready, Justin. What do you think? Sounds good to me, and it looks good, so. Super. Awesome. Well, Ogre's gotten all sorts of uh, demos on him now. I've got to figure out what next to do. He'll, he'll be painted totally patchwork by the end of this. <laughs> but he'll have a lot of examples of different stuff, so it's all good. All right, let's go back to face cam for a bit. Right for stop. All right. We are back, and I've got my, my purple stand-in reading glasses because I totally uh, misplaced my other reading glasses. I may have actually brought them on the trip with me and still haven't found them. <laughs> All right, guys, any questions? Everybody good? Everybody's good. Everybody's like, just like, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> it's not that hard. Just jump in. Just jump in. No fear. No fear painting method. It's kind of like, actually, I'm with that. James Waffle has the same philosophy. Just jump in and do it. Yeah, I'm a Monoob, right? He's, he's, a, he's a WoW character from when you're, like, first level through 20th. <laughs> and you have horrible mismatching colors. I love YouTube Planer. Good deal, Lady Dire Dragon. Base of blue. Oh, if you're going to use metallic. All right. If you're going to use metallic, uh, colored metallics, work best as highlights or accents magnetic gumby. I don't know if I'm getting what you're doing. If you're, if you're going to mix metallic paint into your blue, then silver for sure. Accents, um, silver could work and so would gold work and so would copper work. Gold is a yellow, so essentially you're doing yellow blue at that point. Uh, if you go copper, you're doing orange and blue, which is complementary color scheme, so it works great. Silver is just going to be a neutral, so it doesn't make any color decision for you, and it leaves you room to experiment with different colors on the model for, like, cloth colors and things like that. So, essentially, when metallics, uh, gold and copper do count as colors, but silver counts as a neutral. All right, Miss Ann. Uh, do I ever varnish over the NMM with a gloss? No, that would absolutely uh, detract from it. Um, Zambies. Because the point of NMM is that it photos better because you can control where the highlights are. The minute you put a gloss or a semi-gloss over this, suddenly the environment is going to control the highlights. And worse, it's not going to match up with the highlights you painted. So it's going to essentially confuse everything. It's not going to look like NMM anymore. It's going to look really weird. Uh, so never, ever, ever. If you're going to use a gloss over anything, use it over shaded metallics. So yeah, alrighty. Cool, cool. Yes, you're Andos today. 
Exactly. I'm glad you guys had fun. I had fun too. I like streaming from home because I've got all this light and space. I'm not like crammed in the Reaper closet with Justin. <laughs> Sorry, Justin. <laughs> That's okay. It is the not Reaper everyone, closet. Not everyone wants to be crammed in the closet with, with Justin. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, there are some good tutorials online about NMM too, and it varies depending on the shape of the surface. Um, swords and swords can be the easiest thing to start with and chainmail. Um, and then from there, then you're working on like curved surfaces like this. Um, that can be a little bit harder to visualize where the light is. So, all right. All right. Well, I've got a uh, raid set up for us here. Sweet. Awesome. What are we rate? Who are we rating? We're going to be rating Miniatures Den. Oh, I think I've rated them once before. Yes, he's a, he's a pretty good painter from what, what uh, we can tell. What we can tell, huh? All I righty. think he's going to be at ReaperCon this year. Oh, so sweet. It'll be cool to meet some of these people. Yeah, you're welcome, everybody. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys very much. Indeed. And we will see you later today yes. for yes. Miniature for, for stuff, yes. I'm going to fade to the end. I'm going to use my end screen. Thank you for watching, everybody. Bye. See you guys.